Welcome to Module 4, Week 5 of the Spring 2019 semester. Can you believe we have already completed one quarter of the semester? We're already in the last week of February, and March is just around the corner. As you'll see, we're going a bit out of order from the textbook in this module. As you may know, this course is a required business major transfer course. And one of the major pieces of proof the universities look for before you transfer is whether you successfully learned how to write a lengthy, objective, evidence-based business report. This report is the equivalent of the capstone course report you will need to prepare to earn your bachelor's degree. You'll need to write a master's thesis using much of the same skills and tools you learn in this course if you choose to continue to earn your master's degree and so on. With that information in mind, this is a course requirement. So now you've learned the most important tools to master writing basics of business writing by learning how to use an appropriate style in Chapter 4 and correctness and communication in Bonus Chapter B. These skills are meant to prepare you for this required long formal report. A long formal report takes time. In fact, your final report will not be due for submission until week 12 of the semester. However, my goal is to keep you from procrastinating until the last minute and to help you write the best objective evidence-based business report possible. To that end, many of the assignments we'll complete between now and the due date will include components of the report for which you will get feedback from me to ensure you're on the right track. By the end of this module, you'll meet the Chapter 4 Learning Objectives stated here on page 3.1 of the Module Overview and Learning Objectives page. And to meet these learning objectives for researching, organizing, and writing a long formal business report, you'll need to complete the following activities and assessments. First, you'll need to be sure to read Chapter 8, Researching and Writing Reports in your textbook as well as bonus chapter D, the long report. I have that PDF available for you here. Just click on it and download the PDF. Second, you'll watch and read the chapter 8 PowerPoint lecture. Um, once again, I have given you access to the instructor version of the, P of the PowerPoint slides, and you can access the PDF that includes my lecture notes by clicking here. Next, you'll want to be sure to, again, read the bonus chapter D and download the PDF. A lot of the information in that chapter is going to be used for your report. Okay, page 4.4 is the Analytical Report Instructions and Resources page. I recommend you download, save, and or print all the documents and the resources I have made available to you in this section. You'll notice that there are three tabs that are included on this page. The first tab includes all the uh, uh, analytical report instructions. Uh, it also includes a link for the topics list. There is uh, going to be a list here for you guys to take a look at and choose one of these reports to write on one of these topics to write your report on. And then we talk about the process, the problem solving research reports process. Uh, some of this information is going to be familiar to you. For instance, we talk about the planning phase, the writing phase, and the revising phase. We learned about that in chapter one. Here, I go into a little bit more detail as far as what should be included in the planning phase for this particular report as well as the writing and the revising phases. The next link is the report topics and components. Uh, this information also comes from bonus chapter D, uh, but it's in a little bit more detail for you, and it shows you what I expect to see on your analytical research reports. It will be broken up into these different sections. The report components will include the prefatory pages, the prefatory parts, which includes a title page, a title fly, and a title page. The uh, um, 
information here and the textbook goes into or the bonus chapter D goes into a little bit more detail as well as gives you an example. You'll include a table of contents and an executive summary. The executive summary is not written until the rest of the report is done. This is the last thing you write. You're summarizing the entire report. Then we get to the report proper. It's broken out into the introduction, the problem and purpose of the report, the scope of the report, any historical background that is pertinent, the different sources and methods you used collecting your information, and then the report body. The ending of the report includes the ending summary, which is part of the conclusions and the recommendations, and then the appended parts, which includes the bibliography, but we are using MLA. So in this case, you're writing a works cited page. So make sure you use MLA style uh, for the works cited page and an appendix. Your appendix for this report will be any supplementary information that supports the body of the report. You're going to be required to perform one primary research uh, activity. So it's a source that you yourself have created. Once you read the chapter, you'll understand the difference between secondary and primary research. Um, and it'll also talk to you about what constitutes primary research. Because of the time frame that you guys have for um, preparing this paper, the uh, uh, most obvious um, primary research that you can do is either a personal interview with somebody that um, you know that is related to one of the topics that you um, are choosing, or you can do a survey, or you can um, do some um, questionnaires. Okay, so that's the information that's on this page. Again, I do suggest that you uh, copy, paste, or print out this information so that it's there for you, although um, it is all in the textbook and in bonus chapter D. Finally, the last tab uh, includes a copy, a report template. So I've already prepared a template for you that has the uh, um, report broken out into the different sections with the appropriate f uh, uh, formatting and so on and so forth. So this also explains to you how many pages in length. Understand that when I talk about the fact that this report has to be uh, meet the 10 page double spaced pages minimum requirement that is what you need to write in order for you to qualify to move forward in your uh, in your bachelor's degree to go into the upper division the 10 page minimum starts at the introduction and ends at the re uh, recommendations. The title fly, the prefatory pages, the executive summary, table of contents, works cited, and any other appendices do not count as the report proper. That does not count towards your um, page minimums. Included on this page are links to, again, the report template. It's in an RTF format, I believe. Links to the Purdue Online Writing Lab or OWL PowerPoint that helps you uh, once you come to the point where you're citing your sources. Uh, again, the bonus chapter D and the bonus chapter E that also goes into how to document your sources. This is a little uh, meal paragraphing plan helps uh, a little bit and it came from uh, Capella University and then there's a sample student report I'd like you to look at this I don't want you to copy it okay the formatting is a little bit different than what we're doing but it is something that I'd like for you to take a look at so that you can see what I'm looking for specifically on the executive summary uh, notice how that student wrote up her executive summary so that it really really summarized the entire report so I could make a decision on whether I wanted to read the entire report, whether it was interesting enough or it was um, feasible uh, by just looking at that executive summary. Finally, uh, on several places on this uh, page, you'll see the topics for um, your analytical reports. And uh, this page shows you what the different topics are. 
and it comes in, uh, it, I mean, it, it follows the different disciplines in business, including accounting, um, labor. Um, let me show you here. I don't know if this is going to go. Um, the topic suggestions are accounting, labor, finance, management, and so on. Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll get to see that and that you won't have any problems with that. Okay, clicking on the next button takes us to more information about your um, analytical report. This is your assignment. This is your hands-on assignment. Okay, so once you have uh, determined which topic you're going to write on, you're going to complete this assignment and it's utilizing the skills that you're learning in this chapter. So your, t your um, document is going to include the topic number and its description. Um, the problem or need statement, as you'll learn in the chapter, and then the purpose of your report. It also is going to include an outline. So what I want you to start doing is determining which factors you're going to need to research in order to get the information that's necessary to write a objective business report. There are some examples here from the textbook as to the purpose statement. The purpose statement always starts with to do something. Okay, so in this case, this textbook example, to determine whether Y Company's new location should be built in City A, City B, or City C. This goes into more detail on the PowerPoint slides. This assignment is due on March 3rd, Sunday, March 3rd, by 11.59 p.m. One thing I want to um, point out to you guys is that um, some of you have had some problems submitting your work because you waited until the last minute. Let me let you know that Canvas and the, the college district often does maintenance and up, updating of the uh, systems and the programs on Sunday evenings, even though it's not supposed to impact service often it does and this is when students run into problems so please try to avoid waiting until 11:59 or bef just before that you have this information a week ahead of time okay it's uh, it's here for you 10 days for 10 days so try not to wait until the last minute and finally is of course you have your um, chapter quiz and again you have your two uh, two attempts 30 minutes long you can use your notes, PowerPoint slides, the PowerPoint notes, and the textbook. Again, the deadline due date for this assignment is next Sunday, March 3rd by 11.59 p.m. I hope that you guys have a great week, and remember to contact me if you have any questions, concerns, or run into any problems. Don't wait until the last minute of the due dates to submit your work. I've seen those problems happen all too often. Ciao.